I sent Barry to the town to ask around about a man fitting the kidnapper's description. He'd go through the archives of the local paper. Perhaps he could learn something. Anything about the island and the cabin that had disappeared. The man wanted a manuscript. I had to try to write him one to get Alice back. Whoa, what the hell? For me, the supernatural had always been nothing but a metaphor for the human psyche, a tool to use in writing fiction. Now, it was happening for real, and I couldn't put a single word on paper. Barry Wheeler speaking. This is Rose. Rose? I found Mr. Wake's pages. Oh, you sweet, brilliant girl. Could you and Mr. Wake come get them? I live in the trailer park outside the town. We'll be there in less than an hour. I know. See you soon. Have a great day. Hope you come back soon. I knew it. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the old dear diner. Good girl. What the hell is wrong with this lady, bro? I knew there was something off about her. She's on the strings, huh? Okay. Alright, end of episode two. Previously on Alan Wake, Alice has been kidnapped. Alan, please help me. Alice? You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. I can't tell anyone except my agent, Barry. Damn it, Barry, they'll kill her. You're my best friend, and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. The ransom is a manuscript I supposedly wrote that's coming true before my eyes. It happened just the way it was on that page. So. Dark. I have found only a few scattered pages. I want the entire manuscript. The deadline is in two days. I found Mr. Wake's pages. Good girl. Hey, Alice. Episode 3, Ransom. How the hell did she get her hands on the manuscript anyway? I don't know. She's resourceful. I told you you were too hard on her. Listen, I found out all sorts of interesting stuff while I was digging around. Yeah. Mr. Wake, it's Sheriff Breaker. We have an FBI agent here, Agent Nightingale. FBI? He's anxious to see you. You'd better come to the station. Okay, I'll be right over, Sheriff. Let's make this quick, huh? Help you folks. Name's Randolph. I'm the manager. We're looking for Rose. Works as a waitress down at the diner. Rose, sure. Nice girl. Who wants to know? I'm Alan Wake. The writer, huh? I heard on the radio you were visiting. Well, I'll show you her trail. That Rose, she's a nice girl. Always pays her rent on time. As I was saying, Al, I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspaper's archives. This place is crazy. Disappearances, mysterious deaths, urban legends come true, and get this, most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. Well, you ain't wrong, mister. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. Whoa. I'm the God-fearing type myself. I, I don't hold with that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, <laughs> there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer. But I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving. So much so that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. So there's a couple collectibles here. Actually, quite a few in this area. So. Randy's dogs. Hmm. It says open, but yet it's shuttered. It's funny. Random boat. Yeah, Just, how about yeah. that? It was there in the morning, as if it had fallen from the sky. But it would take a tornado oh, well. or something like that. We're damn lucky it didn't crush any of the trailers. Interesting. 
So there should be a Come thermos on, somewhere mister. around I'll take here. Your trail. Relax, bro. Uh, now turn so you're facing right. You'll see it on the picnic table. Oh, there it is. All right, cool. Just follow me. It's not far. All right, can you relax, man? So got that one, and there's a TV show coming up. So let's keep going. Is this literally it? Who's chopping wood? Dude, who the hell is chopping wood? <laughs> Guess you can't see them. Listen, this I got things cool. to do. This place don't run itself. Can you relax, man? I'm just taking in the sights, man. It's a nice looking trailer park, bro. Let me let me let me, let me check it out, man. I compliment you on your on your place, you know? Like Not many trailer parks look this nice. Got trees and stuff. Plants, garbage everywhere. <laughs> Someone's chopping wood over over there again. Where are you? Show yourself. It's like every time I come over here, the sound stops. It's funny. I wonder if the game actually has someone chopping wood or if it's just the sound. And you just hear it in the distance and it's just like in a location. That'd be funny. Oh, uh, give me a break, mister. Can we just All right. move on? Relax. We're good. Let's go. Open the damn gate. Cause apparently I can't open it myself. It gets better. A local girl, Barbara Jagger, drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Interesting. Sure, Jagger's a local spook story. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Hmm. Anyway, Al. I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What, the lamp lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. Oh. So the woman with the veil is Zane's wife? Yes, yeah, somehow she came back. She's a scratching hag. Can you move, man? God. Hey, what's this? Oh, you go behind the boat over here. Nice. What up, guys? Hmm. <laughs> Took a little detour. How's it going? Why are we going to the garbage? Oh, he's <laughs> scaring the crows away. So that's her trailer, huh? Looks nice. All right, Randolph, hurry up, bro. Well, mister, this here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. <laughs> okay. Not a good, he's not gonna respond to that. I'm just gonna be quiet. That was a knock? Okay. Welcome to... To oh dear, Mr. Oh Lake, God. I'm I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript. You could tell oh. she's brainwashed, bro. Oh yes, yes. Please come in. Hey, this is really good. 
Rose. Yes. My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for <laughs> Barry. She doesn't have anything. Yeah. Uh, hey, Al. Al, what's... Oh, oh. no, she's in the coffee. Oh, goodbye. Barry! What? Oh, he drank it too? Oh, no. What? How did that not shatter? Okay. It's coming for you. Hiding in my barber's skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. Oh. So that's Thomas I Zane. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. So there's a spirit inside her body. I insist. You must turn the lights on. So God is turning on. Oh, what the hell is that? Oh, God. Back to work, boy. Whoa! Okay. Holy crap. Where the hell am I? I felt nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. Of course, it's night time. I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. Mm. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. Interesting. She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do. About the complex incantation I'm attempting. About this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. Mm. I'm getting close. I can feel it. Interesting. Okay. So that is his wife. Damn, bro. She really loves this guy. Is that him? I guess so, yeah. Looks different in some of the pictures. It looks like it looks like a slightly different person. This guy's Rose knocked the hell out for me. I had less than twelve hours left to meet oh, the great. kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. All right, there's a thermos right here. Cool. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. What can I get you today? Coffee. I couldn't work up much hate for Rose. Something had used her to get to me and left its mark. First refill is free. Milk and sugar on the counter there. Would you like to hear today's specials? Thank you. A nice day. Come back soon. Damn, she's done, bro. Okay, let's see. Next one. There's going to be a manuscript. Am I, like, actually going to have to drag this guy out of here? Or what, what's going on? Barry was out of it. He was way too heavy to carry. <coughs> okay. Oh, me is snoring. <laughs> right. I deserve more money. <laughs> I'm so handsome. Hilarious. All right, damn man. I thought I was gonna have like a little bit more of it. My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. I was hoping I still have more of daytime to play through, but damn, man, this was kind of quick. Like 10 minutes. Randolph calls the police. Mr. Randolph liked Rose. That little smile she had. How she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer. But those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble. And they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. Hmm, okay. Alright, so that was manuscript number 33. Then there's a radio show. And this one is, let's see, so... Run straight until you see the stepping stones on the ground leading through a fence. Uh, okay. You'll see it on some stairs as you pass the fence. Oh, yeah. 
I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you, the weather's getting heavy. Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once, once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts, punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> is it just me? Well, perhaps it is. But I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Caller, you're on KBF FM. Hey, hi, it's Walt Snyder. What's on your mind, Walt? Well. I am the way you are, but, well, uh, I can't sleep either, you know? Uh, I've just been staring out the window here, trying to make sense of it all, but, uh, oh. I ain't been drinking either, you know? I just... Well, you sound like a man with a problem, Walt. Yeah, yeah, uh, I had a, uh, you know, uh, argument with Danny, you know, Danny, and, uh, I got in trouble with the law, you know, and um, I'm just, well... I heard something like that, Walt. Yeah, well, you know, he's, uh, you know, Daddy's my best friend, and, uh, they let me out on bail today. And now I'm just alone here at the window, you know, waiting. Man, and there's something in the air tonight, man. Uh, I was just outside looking up at the sky above our broadcast tower thinking the same thing. What are you waiting for, Walt? I don't know. I, you know, something's gonna happen. You know, I gotta, I gotta, I, I think I better go. Well, uh, Walt, uh, hmm. maybe... No, that, thanks, Pat. Uh, well, good luck to you, Walt. Hang in there. Uh, let's take a little break, folks. This weather's really something else, huh? Okay. I really quickly I want to check something. Okay. Alright, let's keep going. It's nothing for a while, so we're good. Is that Randolph? Yep. Oh, you're oh. gonna get it now. Oh, the cops. Okay. God knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Jeez, a Nightingale, FBI. Get him up, oh, Hemingway. You're under arrest. You move a muscle, I'll unload right in your goddamn face. Stay right where you are, Triple Oh, damn, bro. What the hell? They just shoot. Yo, they're shooting Randolph. Crap. What are you? I'm standing right here, you goddamn maniac! <laughs> there you go, Randolph. You tell him, bro. 